What's up, everybody? It's your boy Brandon Blatney, aka Brandon Lee TV. We're following up on the Haley Van Lift news, as we told y'all in our last video that we made. Haley Van Lift has broken the internet, and if you're in the hoop sphere, you've heard that she is making moves to LSU. Now we talked about the commitment, but what exactly does that mean for LSU basketball and the rest of the nation, for that matter? Let's get into it. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. Looking at it, LSU has to replace three starters from a national championship team. They needed to add firepower to that backcourt desperately. The arrival of Haley Van Lift plus five-star and McDonald's All-American Michaela Williams should provide instant scoring punch to this backcourt. I imagine these two will be handing out serious buckets. Vegas currently has LSU as a co-favorite to win since HVL made her announcement. I do think they are the team to beat respectfully, being the defending champs and bringing back Angel Reese, Flage Johnson, the top recruiting class, and Haley Van Lip. You know, respect. HVL provides an immediate scoring punch, and LSU desperately needed that. HVL provides this LSU team a closer and a big time shot maker who isn't afraid of the big moment what alexis morris provided last season van lith is tenacious and egos aside she's one to put winning first and winning does solve everything there are a lot of big personalities in this locker room now and kim mulkey she's the perfect coach to manage that lsu's biggest mystery will be the point guard position they have some options at point guard, whether they go with Van Lith, who's not a traditional playmaking guard. She's more of a score first guard, but at 5'7", she will need to learn how to run a team to help improve her pro aspirations. So that could have been something that got her interested in going to LSU, being handed the keys, being able to run the show. But if they do go in that direction, Van Lith will have to cut off turnovers. She will have to bring those numbers way down as well as work on her playmaking skills and owning that ability to run the team and get everybody else around her involved because we know she's a bucket. If they don't decide to go to Van Lift, Williams or Katari Poole or incoming freshman Angelica Velis could get an option as well. You know, they could get a look at the point guard position as well depending on how Coach Mulkey sees things and how much she depends on these freshmen early on especially on top of all this i know they are still in the running for anessa morrow as well one of the most prolific scorers the nation has seen at depaul over the last two years and i think that would absolutely tip the scales in lsu's favor having that as well as what they already have on the perimeter scoring the basketball i mean they would be a serious problem for the rest of the nation but you wonder if morrow does commit are there enough shots to go around between her van lith and reese they might have some growing pains early building chemistry but i think moreau is the tipping point for lsu and they just had her on campus over the weekend LSU has a different mentality now. They were kind of under the radar last year and had an unprecedented title run. Now, the hunter becomes the hunted. Things lined up perfectly for them during their title run. They didn't have to play the number one seed Indiana or South Carolina to get to the title game and win it. They didn't break 80 points all tournament until the national championship game. They were predicated on their defense last year. This year, I think the strength will be scoring the basketball. They're going to be a more offensive dominated team and be able to just shoot teams out of the gym and run them off the floor. It should be exciting. Now, I did mention LSU were co-favorites. That's because straight up, y'all, a healthy UConn is a sleeping giant. Paige Beckers, the 2021 National Player of the Year, is one of the most talented players in the nation at 100%. And she'll be joined by her splash sister, AZ Fudd. Aaliyah Edwards made tremendous strides in the post last year as well. All three of them back, plus they've been active in the transfer portal and will also bring in McDonald's All-Americans, KK Arnold and Ashlyn Shade to bolster a ridiculously talented, talented backcourt that might be the best in the nation next year. UConn has a good chance to reclaim their throne as the top 
program in women's college basketball next year. And we can't forget about that giant down there in South Carolina as well. Dawn Staley returns Raven Johnson and some serious size on the front line, plus the most productive bench in the nation last year. I think they averaged like 37 points a game or something like that. This will be the next crop of ladies ready to take the torch from the Freshies. And I feel like it's going to be a revenge tour for them because everybody expected the back-to-back -back champs to win. They also bring in a very talented recruiting class of their own. Now, I know what you're wondering, and in my next video, I'll dive into how HBL's decision impacts national runner-up Caitlin Clark in Iowa. But let's just say this, it's not a full-gone conclusion, they always still have to play the games, and I, I think LSU is the favorite, but there are still some teams out there that are very talented that are going to have something to say about it, and we're still making, we're waiting on some key moves in the transfer portal as well, so keep an eye out on that. That's a wrap for us. For all the latest and the greatest, make sure you hit that subscribe button. This has been Live with Brandon Blakey. I'm your boy, Brandon Blakey, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. You dig?